and the yeah. practice went to another level. This is like 16 year old LeBron James. So and he's been everything he was hyped and billed and expected to be and more on and off the court. Um, Michael you used to say this so Natalie you and I talked about it you're a Jordan person you were raised right you young but you were raised right 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 my requisite daily Natalie age joke I got to do it once a day at least okay I thought the way I'm not gonna do it no out more. the way but so you're a Jordan person everybody knows I'm a Jordan person Michael at some point I don't know if you were trolling no. or if it turned for you was he Ooh. where you went on the LeBron no, side and even though we knew last night was coming it was inevitable we knew he was see, going to pass he, Kareem as the number one all time scorer we knew he was going to continue to climb the assist chart he's fourth all time I'm wondering even though we knew it was coming okay. now that it's happened no, no, see this, this has it changed anything for this you This changes nothing OK. This changes nothing. This is it not, cements I, it then? It, it, Does no, it cement no, something no, for no, you? No, I'll rephrase it's it. Like, okay, it, no, because it, it was, okay, we knew this was coming before the season, right? Correct. And so it's almost like you know something's going to happen, then it happens like, oh, no, my eye, mine eyes have seen. No. Right. I mean, no we knew we he could score. Okay. <laughs> he scored a lot of points. Yeah. We don't really have time. I'm going to make this brief because we don't have time for really what this deserves. I've never seen a player like Michael Jordan. I've never – he. I haven't seen anybody who reminds me of Michael Jordan. So Jordan is, is unmistakable. He is unique. There's no such thing as very unique. It's redundant. He's, he's unique. I haven't seen anybody play like that. And, but beyond that, Jordan for me, culturally, was everything. I, I, like the old folks, okay, uh, the Beatles, uh, <laughs> you know, what, some kind of cultural phenomenon, whatever it was for you. It'd be the beehive today, I guess. I'm just trying to think <laughs> of like some kind of comparison. Michael Jordan, there was so much excitement around how he looked, yeah. what he said, where he was, how he played. And that was, that was so um, assuring for me. That, that was so transformative for me as a kid. Like Michael Jordan, the way he wore his, his shorts, we wore sh our shorts like that. When he went bald, oh, our brothers went bald. Uh, okay, he, he was good for the. Hey, hey, I know Benny always talked about this. You know, the, uh, his colorism for the dark skins in the in the house. Michael Jordan was tremendous. I'm serious. So, so it, it, you can't really compare. But that all that being said, I'd say put it all together. LeBron, I think LeBron's a better player. Okay. So I told you a long time ago. Ooh. I'm not going to fight you on that. That hurt. I'm not going to fight you on that. Saying that. Because. But I believe that. Natalie, you weren't with us then. I feel like I'd drop the mic, if I may say so, on this conversation, at least for me. I tapped out of it because I think it's Prince and Stevie Wonder. I think it's a matter of preference. Like, I love Stevie Wonder. I'm a Prince guy. He loves Prince. He's a Stevie Wonder guy. I'm a Jordan guy. If you want to go to bat for LeBron James, say he's the greatest basketball player of all time, I'm not going to fight you on it. They got some people who say Kareem, some will say Magic. It, it's a cop-out, but it's true. To be in the conversation yeah. in and of itself. It's a blessing, right. And, and the way that he's evolved his game over the years, the way that he's adapted with the game, the way that he's been at yeah. the forefront of the game's evolution, the, the versatility, um, you know, the, the prowess at both ends of the court, um, his career, I'll give him this, he should, he should believe he's the best. He has every right to believe he's the best. If I don't agree, that's, that's my opinion. Right. He's got an argument. His story. You're starting to go there. His story. I, don't, I won't even say he has the best career. Because I, I, I still think you could put Kareem's basketball career, the guy, yeah. who, the guy who, who passed the torch to him last night. Yeah, and that's Going and back that's to high thing. school at Power Memorial, going back to UCLA, the Olympic. I mean, Kareem, it's, all that off the court career. Can I just in, interject for 15 yeah, sure. seconds? Just 15, then I'll give it back to you. Yeah. Just a little, par uh, little uh, parenthetical. It's so funny that you say like LeBron passes Kareem. Does it change anything for you? Is LeBron the best? How about the guy he passed? Yes. He's just been totally ignored. No, in this he hasn't been totally ignored. He's been ignored. He, he hasn't he has. been totally no. as the Michael, greatest. You as can't the greatest, be totally ignored as when great. everybody goes out no. of his way, rightfully so, to say he's being ignored. But see, but that, he's you know no what? longer being ignored. Can I say this? Can I say this? Yeah, I don't and think I, he's I, actually I, really I being use considered this. anymore. I think I, Kareem. I, I haven't used my. I haven't no, used I my quote. Think, I don't think of this generation and when the conversation's right. framed, it's constantly framed between the two. And that's always what my issue is. Thank you, Natalie. Just say because I was about to cuss. I was about to cuss. Thank you. No, now you got Kareem is in the conversation, and I love. 
love that you said magic because there was a time that people considered magic the best and like people just started overlooking these things and if you talk to people of generations even before me they're still like wait hold on Bill Russell. so yeah so right. it's just it, it's well, not well, being framed like that Kobe okay right wait, wait, I need you cuss now though because if LeBron could cuss then you could cuss <laughs> no, I was gonna say go ahead but, and say F and, man but no, no no I'm gonna say I was gonna say it's <laughs> bullshit Okay. Okay, well, it's total bullshit. Everything you, you say, just said is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Because here it is. This is why it is. It, you can't tell me, like, But hey, I'm entertaining I, you. I, I, I appreciate you. And like, you are in the conversation. But, like, people say that all the time. And that, you want to talk about a cop-out. That's a cop-out for Kareem. Hey, why are we just asking, why are we talking about Kareem? But nobody makes the case. No, a they'll lot say, of people do make the say, case. Oh, I don't up. think you listen they, to the right people. No, I, I, what I hear is, hey, Kareem... Uh, what he, he he had six MVPs and all these championships and he won it in two different places and look at this all-time leading score and then it goes right back it defaults to the LeBron MJ debate there is no three-headed debate here okay. Mike all right. okay I'll, I'll give you that I'll give you that it feels so like so if, if we're gonna talk about Kareem let's talk about Kareem okay let's talk about Kareem being an all-time leading score without a three-point shot if we well, we can right. do that you know what I mean but. Ultimately, I would say my, my overall point of LeBron was. But the reason I'm talking about him is because he's 7'2 and he's. No, and, and, and I don't hard, take anything away from Kareem. But, it's hard to, but I think it's hard for people to look at it, that, to, to appreciate what he did so gracefully, so efficiently, without the three point shot, 7'2. It, it's hard to look at a guy. It, it, there's no crossover. There is no, ooh, he jumped and he dunked. It, I think, it, honestly, not, you know what it is? I think it's optics. You know I think what it a lot is? of it's optics. You know what it is? Because, I mean, Shaq would like a word. I mean, a lot of people like a word. You know what it is? It's because Jordan was the GOAT, the guy who wore 23, the guy who was a wing player, the guy who reminded us of Jordan. Yeah. That's where we went. Same with Kobe. So I don't think it's a matter of a, a slight against Kareem. It's more about who LeBron reminded us of or who he was coming for. Had the GOAT been a center, then maybe we would be – had the GOAT been Kareem and not Jordan, maybe we'd be looking at a center the way we look at LeBron. But what I wanted to say was LeBron's story is unmatched. That's all I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Coming, you've, you talked about what Akron, Ohio yeah. was, is and was. But what he came from and his biggest misstep, quote unquote, is a is a, an announcement at a boys and girls club. OK, for the career that he's had on and off the court, there is there, no no better story in the NBA. And last night was such a great capper watching his sons who, you know, soon he's going to be playing with his son. He's going to add that to his legacy. Watching his sons watch him was truly special. Hey, send that to me. He said, Kurt, you got that same? Yeah. You got that of same? course, Dad. <laughs> Kurt Healing, you were in the house last yeah. night. You probably overheard us having for the umpteenth millionth time uh, a GOAT discussion. I think a debate gets more and more difficult with every LeBron James yeah. accomplishment. What did last night's uh, formality, because we knew it was coming, uh, and he has nothing else to prove, but what did last night's formality and his cor the coronation of, for the king, taking the throne and taking the crown as the all-time leading scorer, what does that do to, if anything, to the GOAT conversation? I, I think it's, I would say you could argue it's another pillar in his argument, but, or, you know, whatever you want to phrase that. But like you said, we knew that was coming. Like we've known since before the season, he was going to get it this season. So I don't think it changes anything. I do think sometimes what gets overlooked, and I thought Darvin Ham made this awesome point before the game, LeBron's not a scorer by nature. It puts up a lot of points. He's a playmaker. Yeah. He's a guy who right. wants to pass first. And Ham's like, you know, when you empower everybody around you, when you make all your teammates better and make Booby Gibson a threat and <laughs> all these guys who he's lifted up through Austin Reeves this year, when those guys are threats, your scoring hmm. job gets it. You can get to the bucket and get your buck because I can't leave this guy because Moronk's going to find him and make him look good. He might be the best teammate of all time. What did last yeah. night, what, what was your biggest takeaway from the scene last night being oh, in the building? Because yeah. you could feel the electricity was, through the screen. Yeah. 
It was the first time I had felt Laker Nation, Laker fans embraced LeBron. Really embraced him. Because remember, he came to town on the heels of Kobe. He was never, they were excited about him coming there and the possibilities, but he was never, he was a mercenary. He wasn't welcomed in like one of their own. They don't make the playoffs the first year. They win a title, but everybody's sitting at home watching their couch and small. There was no community in LA. You couldn't go to the games. You couldn't even go to a bar, right? Like everybody was home during COVID watching it on their TVs. It didn't have the same cultural impact in the city. This was the first time it was a full-throated war. It was a full-throated embrace of LeBron as he set history in the building. And you could feel Laker fans everywhere just so into this and into this moment and this you know, like the Lakers needed another piece of legacy, but like it fits in. If you're going to do it, it's kind of wild to do it on that stage. And I, I felt like that was the one takeaway. There was, that felt like a, guys, it felt like a finals game. It had that finals game kind of energy. All right. Well, well Kurt Heelan, you're a basketball storyteller. You're a basketball historian. Uh, and, and you're no longer in your daughter's room. So when you, when you come back, <laughs> when you, like, so when you, when you get to a grandpa and great grandpa status, what will you tell the young kids about this guy, LeBron James? What are you going to say? Yeah, I'd like grandpa status to be a few years off, if we can arrange that. Um, <laughs> I, I would still say the most gifted player ever, and a guy who, look, obviously touched by the gods, 6'9", incredibly quick, insane vision, almost an eidetic memory of basketball. If you, if you guys have interviewed him, you, Michael, you guys have been around him. Like he can recall plays from three years ago and like where everybody is on the court. It, it's ridiculous. And through all that, how many guys have we seen in every sport have gifts and not make the most of them? LeBron, I think the lesson from him, what I would want my kids to take away from him is, I mean, we wrote, I wrote a story this week talking about LeBron's conditioning. You know, he was stretching every morning and every night at age 10 and 11. He was icing himself after games in high school. He was envisioning what he could be and how long he could play that early and taking care of his body that early in a way, look, I don't know, when I was in high school, the only ice was in my drinks. Like, it was, <laughs> it was not, it was not, like, I said, like, he was preparing for this opportunity to have his yeah. body ready for this. Not everybody takes advantage of their gifts the way he did. Yeah. Natalie, got one last question for you, Kurt. Yeah, Kurt, I'm just curious, where do you think this cements him in Laker, his legacy for Ooh. the Laker franchise, with there being so many greats? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'd still say he's he's kind of on the second tier. Like, that top tier is Kobe and Magic and probably just those two. And then maybe West, you could argue. I, um, it's a little before my time. Um, the, uh, based on the videos I've seen, the flattest shot that was ever good. I don't know how a guy ever made a basket. Um, and then <laughs> you got that second tier with, uh, he might eventually make there. I don't know. With one championship, it's hard to do it because Shaq has, yeah. Shaq and Kobe have, Shaq, well, Shaq, Kobe has five. Kobe's on that upper echelon with Michael, but like, he got three from everybody. Yeah, I don't know. He'd be a little farther down just because it's so deep and everybody else has so many yeah. championships. Hey, Kurt, you're number one in our book. You're number one in our book, baby. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Well, we'll talk Thank to you, you again. Trade deadline. Clock's ticking. I'm sure we'll talk to you later this week. Thanks, brother. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See what the Lakers do. We had to remind them about the yeah, trade deadline. Like, oh, like, oh, like, oh, here we come. Back to life. Back to reality. <laughs> um, speaking of the clock, are right, we going to take this break. Hendon Hooker, formerly of the University of Tennessee, coming to an NFL team near you. Nice. It's coming up. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.